Today, I'm down at Max Motive in Cheswick, Pennsylvania to take a deeper look at the Mercury 8. But before we take the tour, if you stumbled upon this channel, welcome. I'd like to invite you to hit that subscribe button, turn on all notifications as well. And one more thing, what cars would you like to see an in-depth look at? Put it in the comment section below. Okay, back to the Mercury 8. The Mercury 8 was produced from 1939 to 1951 in three generations. Generation 1 was 1939 to 1940. Generation 2, 1941 to 1948. Both the first generation and the second generation Mercury shared the Ford body style, just had their own different touches like a Chevy or an Oldsmobile Pontiac sort of thing. Third generation was 1949 to 1951, and it shared the same design with Lincoln. Getting back to the 1948 second generation of the Mercury 8, it was offered in many different body styles, two-door coupe, two-door convertible, four-door sedan, four-door wagon. There was a two-door sportsman convertible, which was a woody wagon version, but it was discontinued in 1947. It's also worth mentioning that this is a carryover body design that started in 1946. Technically, this body started in 1941. Uh, the grill was a little bit different. They changed up the grill after the war. There's a bit of a gap between 1942 to 1945 because that's when America was at war and manufacturers couldn't make civilian cars anymore they were shut down for the government to make tanks and various other machines of war for some reason there isn't a whole lot of ads in 1948 so 47 and 46 you might see some ads pop up from those years because the ones from 1948 that i could find are very similar to one another and instead of repetition i decided to get ones from previous years because the car is essentially the same design Getting inside, just look at all the wood trim. The dash is wood. It looks like simulated wood, if I'm honest. I'm not sure if this interior has been redone, but it's so plushy in here. I love how the colors complement one another, from the ivory steering wheel to the simulated wood and the red seats. It's pretty basic, but it's a very nice design. It's carpet down at the bottom. This is like a leather material. This almost feels like a headliner material in the center. This is all simulated wood. It's not real, it's like painted metal. As well as the dashboard, it's the same way. Door handle to get out. Window crank for the big window. I just noticed the window. It's all trimmed in. It's a nice quality feature. The vent window has a crank. This has a locking key cylinder. Also notice the keys, look how small they are. All right, let's go through this dashboard. The handle that's protruding outwards in your view is actually for the spotlight, but let's talk about these gauges. Fuel, oil, amp, and temperature. Moving towards the center, like directly in your center line of view is the speedometer, and just notice the colors. It looks very watch-like. Moving just to the right of that, in the center of the dashboard is the radio with the tuner. The speaker's behind the mesh. It's probably a tube-style radio, but just look at how they broke that down. One side is the radio tuner. The other side is the speaker setup. Just to the right of that, beautiful clock. Looks just like a Rolex watch dial with their colors and stuff. And then off to the extreme right, glove box. This one has Calvent air conditioning, but that's all the further it goes up. It doesn't have different stopping points. Notice the mirror, notice how small it is. Just below the mirror, but on top of the dash, his and her ashtrays, and they slide, which is very cool. Footwell here. This is your emergency brake. Check out these pedals. Notice the round. Ford, Ford did things a little bit different than everybody else round pedals bright light switch okay so the hood release on this one is actually underneath the dash all right after hitting the hood release you come up front here and there's a little tab right inside here the tab does nothing at all but i guess it's like a grommet so it doesn't smack off the chrome the actual doohickey is right here Just so you can see, this is the actual latch that you move. 
Okay, let's talk about the engine powering the Mercury 8. It's a 239 flathead V8. It's basically a copy of the earlier 221 V8 design with a larger bore to increase power. The 239 was called the 100 horse motor because that was the power output, which was a really big deal back then. Compression was 6.8 to one compression through a single barrel carburetor. The term flathead refers to the head design. Most modern cars have the valves on top of the engine, whereas in a flathead design, the valves live inside of the engine. Also note, this engine has two water pumps. Mercury had two transmissions on offer, the three-speed manual. They also had a liquid Matic semi-automatic transmission that was also available. The three-speed manual was a column shift unit. I just want to point out a few things that I saw. This here sucks in air and it vents it. This is a nice air vent right into right into here, which brings you fresh air into the cabin. Also, the battery is located inside the engine compartment. Notice these horns. They're very uniquely shaped. They're sphere. They're sphere-like. Notice the flathead V8 sits way back in here. Like, I'm gonna back out so you can see. Okay, moving back here to the trunk area. So just check that trunk out. Look at these hinges, how they work. These braces. And that's what the hood would have had. It would have had something similar to this design instead of the new struts full-size spare tire i like how it's like mounted in here so it won't move around okay it's worth mentioning that this has a locking mechanism on it so if you go and put the trunk all the way up it will not shut until you move it so you have to push up on it move this see how that moves once it's in that position you can shut it There is a keyhole in the back here. And that's that's another art that's lost. They just put keys, they just put keyholes in it and call it a day. This has a cover, it has a nice mechanism. Okay, we're at the end of the video and I totally forgot to go over the specs of this Mercury 8. Wheelbase is 118 inches long. The length of the overall length of this vehicle is 201. 8 inches. The weight is anywhere between 3,400 pounds to 3,800 pounds. Total production in 1948 was 50,268 units, and that's for everything. That's for the wagon, the four-door sedan, the two-door two -door coupe, the two-door convertible. Okay, on to the pros and cons. Unfortunately, my book that I've been getting all the pros and cons from doesn't have this year of Mercury 8. There is, however, um, pros and cons for the Mercury 8 from 1941 to 1942. And even though that, that's not the year that this one is, it's the same generation. So I'm going to take those pros and cons because I've searched the internet and I can't find any pros and cons on this particular vehicle. So the pros, fit and finish, good performance. The cons, clumsy styling compared to the 39 and 40. But I think time has definitely done this style very well. I think this car looks phenomenal now. It definitely aged really well. All right, well, thank you guys so much for watching. As always, toodaloo!